The next thing I want to do is add some texture to these handles, handle inserts. Uh, you can see on the front and the back, these are going to be made of a rubber grip. They're going to be molded separately from the actual uh, hair dryer body. Uh, so we'll actually texture and split them out separately. Uh, we'll use an image of kind of like a wavy pattern to project on it, but there's any number of different things you could use, uh, any black and white image. So, but the first thing I want to do is I want to separate it, separate out an area that's going to receive the texture within this handle area. I don't want to texture it right up to the edge because I'll have a mismatch. I want to have a nice uh, transition between my uh, textured area and my smooth body of my hair dryer. So the first thing I want to do is separate out in a certain section. On my original plane that I had actually done the uh, cutouts with, and you know the ones I had used for the uh, boundaries, I've also offset the curve to the inside to create two areas that I'm going to use to select clay using a profile select. So I'll say profile select, select this, I'll do select the clay, which will kind of choose an area of uh, each one of the parts of the grips, and I'll copy that, so I'll say copy it, and I'm going to paste it as a new piece. These new pieces are what are going to be textured, and then they're going to be merged back in after they're textured. In this way, I can uh, control what receives the texture and what does not. So you can see I've got this little separated section out and I'll texture that area first and then combine it back into the other piece. Uh, that way I can protect any of this area out here. I could also do the same thing or something similar with mask but I'm doing it this way just for an example. I've used embossed with image and loaded in a wavy pattern. I've also changed that wavy pattern to a cylinder and sized it up. The next thing I want to do is make sure that uh, cylinder is aligned with my actual clay material. You can see it's sticking straight up. I want to align it on an angle. So I'll use the advanced control to be able to rotate that thing back slightly so I can best fit uh, where my model is. I'm also going to move it back so it totally encompasses the area that needs to be textured and apply it like that. So once it's in place, I've got it lined up. I want to set a value. Two millimeters is a good distance to emboss it. Uh, while you're working through this, you might preview it a couple times just to see what value you like best. Uh, I might even set it down to 1.5 millimeters so I have a light texture on it. And then I can do an apply. So it's created the texture of uh, the wavy pattern down the front of the model. And you can see by separating that piece out, I was able to texture just the area that I wanted and, un and keep the rest of it unaffected. The next step is to combine that piece back into the actual handle so that it's all one piece again. So I do a combine into handle. And I'll repeat the same operation with the back as well so that I've got one piece that has the texture of the front and the back on it. So here you can see it's um, joined in the textures along with it. Uh, it fits in the actual pattern. Uh, I could go in and add more detail to it. I could soften the edges of the transition of the texture to the smooth area but there's any, any number of things I can do to tune that. Uh, but it's created a nice result of a textured inlay. Here we'll select uh, edges uh, from the solid or the sheet body. In this case, this is a sheet body, but it could be a solid as well. We'll select edges uh, as a way to cut out these polygonal areas, uh, the textured areas, to make them separate uh, entities. So we go to our export mesh command, and we want to make sure it's set on export region only and come up and choose the edges that surround the uh, part to cut out. Choose all the way around it. What this does, it sections off that area of the clay. And once it's selected, as I go around it, it forms a box around it saying, yes, this piece is chosen, and I can separate it out. So once I'm touching it and the box is visible, I click on it. And these two entities or options become available. What I want to do is export it to a reference piece that will place it as a uh, the trimmed out section of the polygon mesh as a reference piece in the object list. It turns this unusual brown right before it uh, becomes the reference piece, and then changes to the valid reference piece color. So if I turn off everything in the scene except that, I'll be able to see that I have just a trimmed polygon mesh. And I'll be able to use that for uh, molding or rapid prototyping, uh, depending on what I do with the actual model. But it's textured, 
uh, three-dimensional texture design that's going to be used for the rubber molded grip, something you cannot do in uh, uh, surfaces easily at all.